So we uh, finished talking about davening. We finished talking about Tehillim after davening. And now we're going to move on in the Siddur. So right after davening, you'll notice on page 82 in the Siddur, Rabbeinu Tam's Tefillin. So what's the story with Rabbeinu Tam's Tefillin? So basically, we know that in our Tefillin, we have four sections of the Torah that are written on, in our Tefillin. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Four passages from the Torah, where actually the mitzvah of Tefillin are are, are written. So we're, there are four places in the Torah that we're, we're commanded to wear to fill in. And those four instances are the, uh, make up the four parshas, the four portions that are written into, onto the scrolls that are put into the tefillin. So our hand tefillin, right, which is one solid box, has a long scroll, and the four paragraphs, the four portions, are written one after the other. And then in our head tefillin, you'll notice that there are four compartments in the head film. There are four distinct compartments. The four distinct compartments, each one of the four passages is written on one little piece of parchment that's then wrapped, uh, it's folded, and then wrapped with, with, uh, with some parchment and with string to be closed. Uh, the string, everything obviously made of, of, of the cow, of the animal that's used. And they're placed into these four compartments. So the question is, what is the order in which these portions should be written? So that's, that's the question, basically. And what you have is two, but really four opinions, right? So, right, two Jews, four opinions. So that's how it goes. Now, the, the, basically, the, the, the basic argument would be, well, the two, I say two that are four because there are two opinions as to how to write the, tefillin, the, write the sequence for the hand fill-in. Those are, those are, there are two opinions for that, but with the head fill-in, it's four. In what, in what sense? or what's the argument about? The question is, what's the order with which you should write them? So there are two ways you can look at it, right? Number one is that you would go, let's say, start writing. So, let, so we're going to write them chronologically, right? As they appear in the Torah. So, what, so what's that order? How do you, how do you order them in, you, in your tefillin? So one option is to go, let's say, right to left, right? So you start from the beginning, the first one in the right, and then second, and so on. Another opinion is to go right to left to the middle and left to right, so that it goes in for both sides. So you'd write, you know, chapter one, chapter two, and then chapter three and chapter four, as opposed to one, two, three, four. Okay, that's the general, uh, that's the general uh, argument between the, between the two major the, the two major opinions. However, within those opinions, you have something else, which is what's right to left. Is right to left meaning right to left of the one wearing the tefillin, or right to left of the person standing at you, standing in front of you, and looking at your tefillin? So this this is how we end up with four opinions with how to put the tefillin, the parchment, into the tefillin. Okay. Basically, the question is: Do they go in order in one direction, or do they go in multiple directions in order? And are they right to left from the person, the vantage point of the person wearing them, or right to left from the vantage point of the person looking at the person wearing them? That's basically the argument. The, the, the two most popular personalities that took different sides in this argument would be Rashi, the great commentary on the Chumash, and Rabbeinu Tam, his grandson. Rabbi Yaakov Tam, the grand, Rashi's grandson, they argued on what was the proper order. Now, this argument didn't start with them. The argument started at Mount Sinai. Moses comes down, gives all the commandments for tefillin, gives us all the regulations for them. They have to be black, they have to be square, they have to have these four portions, they have to be written in a specific way, they have to be put on a certain way. All of these all of these commandments were given to Moses orally. So we have the command to wear tefillin. And we, we, you know, as we, we, we've talked about, I think, in the past, it's very cryptic in the Torah. It appears four times, which makes it seem very important, and yet there's almost, there, there are virtually no details. All those details were actually handed to Moses at Sinai. They are in the category of the oral tradition that's called halacha l'moshem Sinai laws that Moses handed down at Sinai, which is that there means that they're non-negotiable. Moses comes down and says, this is what they mean, this is what they look like, and that's it. But... He didn't specify the, the proper sequence. And there, the, the sages, immediately after Moses comes down and tells them about, uh, about wearing tefillin, that was one piece of, 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 of information that was lacking. So they debated it. They debated it, and they came up with their different opinions. Okay. And so there have always been these different opinions. But as I mentioned, the, the, a few thousand years later, Rashi and Rabbi Tam make those, the, those two specific opinions famous. Rashi famously champions one opinion, Rabbi Tam champions the other, which is why the tefillin that we wear, since the, the unanimous or the majority opinion follows Rashi um, in, in, this, in this dispute. So therefore, everybody that puts on tefillin wears Rashi's tefillin. Again, Rashi's tefillin, he didn't invent the tefillin. He didn't invent the order of the tefillin. He just championed 
most famously that, uh, that, that position. Okay, so they're called Rashi's Tefillin, the Tefillin of Rashi. Uh, the less popular opinion is the Tefillin of Rabbeinu Tal. Now, um, we know that in Judaism, whenever you have different opinions, if they're valid Jewish opinions, they're all part of Torah, right? They're all significant. And so here, when you enter the mystical dimension, suddenly we realize something else, which is <clears throat> all four opinions are, are, are true. All four opinions are true. And so why though do we wear Rashi's tone? Because Rashi's tefillin are the ones that we can, um, that, that, that is most accessible to the masses. What do I mean by that? So the tefillin that we, when we put on our tefillin, so it says that in Kabbalah, that we access or we channel the divine, um, the divine dimension of Bina. So we know that, and we're going to actually talk about this in a moment to Tanya a little bit, that, there's, there, that there are three components of the intellect. There's Chachma, Bina, and Dat. Chachma is wisdom, Bina is understanding, Dat is knowledge. So Bina, this level of Bina of understanding, of divine, uh, supernal understanding and the divine sort of intelligence, that is an, when we put fill on our heads, we, we access, we channel, we draw energy from that level. Rabbeinu Tam's tefillin, on the other hand, channel a divine energy from the level of Chachma, which is even higher, which is even higher, which is why we put on Rashi's tefillin, why we make a blessing on the tefillin of Rashi and not on the tefillin of Rabbeinu Tam, because we can access, any, any one of us can access that level by putting on tefillin. And therefore we can recite the blessing, which also represents the drawing down of that energy. And therefore that's, that's why that became the tefillin, that, uh, that's the position that everybody uh, uh, follows. Rabbeinu Tam's tefillin are on a higher level. And yet higher are the other two opinions that were, were championed by Shemusha Rabba and Raivid. They're called the tefillin of Shemusha Rabba, the tefillin of Raivid. Um, and those represent the level of Keter beyond intelligence. Those at channel a level of divinity that is beyond divine intelligence, the level of Keter, the level of the crown, the level of the divine will. And in the divine will, we know we have two levels. There's Atik and there's Arach. Arach Hampin and Atik Yemen, the higher and the lower. So each one channels another, another element. We'll talk about this. We'll continue this uh, very interesting conversation, God willing, uh, next week. <laughs>